What's up, Matt from Roach Fab here. In today's video, we're gonna be reassembling this Quaif four-speed rocket gearbox, which I disassembled in the last video and found quite a lot of faults with it. So I've uh, gathered up all the parts I need now to rebuild it to a decent standard. If you're interested in seeing how this was stripped down, I'll put a link to the first video up here. <clears throat> the reason I initially stripped the box was to change the gear ratios. I needed to change third gear because this had um, hot rod racing gear ratios where second and third gear are almost identical. But once I stripped the gearbox down, I discovered there was a lot more wrong with it than just needing a couple of gears to change in. We had some pretty significant damage to the main shaft and uh, also a few other bits. So I got in contact with Quaif and was able to source the gears I need to change the gear ratio. Also, uh, fourth gear on the lay shaft was damaged, so I've got a new fourth gear. The main shaft was absolutely mullered. When I ordered the new parts from Quaif, I got chatting with a chap called Dave from Quaif. Uh, he'd watched the video that I'd done and said that they have a lot of old um, stock parts from these gearboxes. So, so I managed to get hold of a used good condition main shaft. So this is in excellent condition. That bearing surface, which was the bit that was damaged on the old shaft is absolutely perfect. Um, a lot of people commented that this would be damaged on the inside. And uh, I'll show you a close up, looks really good to me. It's not chewed up like the end of this is. Uh, I don't actually have anything to measure it to, to get a uh, definite answer on whether there's any wear in there. I'm just going on a visual inspection. This is the reverse gear and synchro hub, which was damaged on this one. Also got a reverse gear, some synchro rings, some new gaskets. I actually bought another complete donor box as well, uh, which I'm going to be using the lay shaft spindle out of. And uh, I'm going to use the casing from that as well. So yeah, it wasn't too hard um, sourcing the parts thanks to uh, Quaif and uh, cheers Dave if you're watching. This makes my life a bit easier. I was going to attempt to repair this and uh, put a sleeve onto that, but this is definitely the better option. So the first thing we'll do is get the lay shaft swapped over. That's fourth gear which is chewed up. This is what we're swapping for this one. So you can see um, third gear, almost identical size to second gear. We're swapping it for a much bigger one. This is a 1.2 to one ratio. So we got a bigger, a bigger gear on here, means we now need a smaller gear here. This is our third gear. You can see, much smaller. Now we go on there. We can check that this meshes together right. And then we know that everything's as it should be. So now we just got to transfer all this lot onto our new, main shaft. The way this synchro hub, this has got a little, little groove in it and this is like a little detent which sits on these tabs which locate into the synchro rings. These slide in underneath like so and then you've got these little spring ring things. So that little spring is basically pushing these outwards and that allows this to slide back and forward. And then these are what locate onto the synchro ring. So you've got the three grooves in there. They locate like that. 
This pushes onto the gear, allows this to slide in like that, and then allows these teeth to grip on to the actual gear teeth. Both on there. <coughs> the tricky bit is making sure that this, if this slides off, all those, uh, what are they called? Blocker bars, they're called. They will fall out. Easiest way to uh, get this bearing to drop on easily is just a bit of heat. Same deal with this one. This is for third and fourth. <clears throat> I had a few people say they just didn't understand how it worked or what was going on. They couldn't get their head around it, so with it on the bench like this it's much easier to actually see what's what. You got the input shaft which is fixed to this gear which is separate to the output shaft here. These can move independently of each other. First, second and third are all free to spin. All the gears on this are obviously locked solid. So if the input shaft is rotating, this is rotating. Because all this is fixed, this is coming from the flywheel, rotating here, rotating the lay shaft. If it's in neutral and these three gears are free to spin, the output shaft can stay stationary, but I can turn this and all those three gears are rotating. So that's neutral. Then to go into first, the selector hub pulls across so now first gear is fixed solid to this shaft. So it's coming in, into the lay shaft, back out through first gear at this ratio. Click into second, this one's free to spin, this one's free to spin. Back into neutral, third comes over this side, like that. These two are now free to just rotate and we're onto this gear. And then fourth just connects this shaft to that shaft. So this is now one straight piece. That's why you've got the one to one ratio on fourth gear. So hopefully that uh, clears it up and is a bit more easy to understand. So just as a reference, this is the original gear set out of the spare gearbox parts I bought. And these are helical gears, which is what come in most factory gearboxes and the, the benefit of this setup is that when the gears mesh together it's a much smoother connection because you've got more uh, tooth engagement as one tooth connects onto the next and it creates a very smooth and quiet running of the two gears together uh, in comparison to a straight cut gear which um, there's an amount of lash in there and it creates a bit of noise. You can see the straight cut teeth are bigger than the helical teeth. So that's gonna create a uh, stronger gear. It's also better for fast gear changes, uh, but the probably the main benefit is that the straight cut gears, if you imagine them mounted horizontally, um, the force is all applied in the vertical plane pushing straight down on the gear uh, whereas if you see here as you twist a helical gear it's actually if you imagine that gear mounted on a horizontal shaft it's pushing the gear horizontally as well so you're applying force in uh, both ways 
uh, vertically and horizontally to sort of put it simply so um, that puts a lot of strain on stuff and uh, that's why a straight cut gearbox will generally take uh, more power than a than a helical gearbox so just put a new seal in the tail housing the bush in the end of here is pretty much new anyway so no need to change that and then the uh, main shaft assembly drops in and that bearing just needs to be um, knocked into place and then there's a big internal circlip which is quite tricky to get in I'm sure of the correct tool it's uh, a doddle but doing it with a set of long nose pliers is quite tricky this is the lay shaft and uh, you'll see what I use that bit of rubber tube for uh, but this is just a case of sticking all these roller needle roller bearings in the end and I just use some grease to hold them all in place stop everything falling out and then you've got two washers that pack either side again which um, I just stick in place with some grease you've got different size needle rollers either end as well so you've got to make sure that you've got the right length ones in there and you can see it's all they're all sort of stuck in place and not going anywhere but that piece of rubber tube is uh, same diameter as the the lay shaft spindle and that just holds all those needle rollers and everything in place that's the thrust washer you can see there which goes at the end of the lay shaft and uh, I just use a bit of grease on those to stick them into the casing and then you've got to try and slide the lay shaft down into the bottom of the casing where it drops clear of everything so that you can load all the other parts in then once you've got it all together you you lift the lay shaft up and then you push the lay shaft spindle through to lock it all in place which you'll see me do in a minute it is a bit fiddly but that's the that's the lay shaft sat in the bottom of the casing and you can see it's low enough to get all the other parts in and you can see the reverse gear in there as well So just making sure I've got the uh, fourth gear synchro ring on there and the cage needle roller bearing that goes in the end of the um, input shaft. And then you just have to carefully just slot everything into place. There's a little uh, recess on the tail housing that allows you to feed the lay shaft spindle in. Um, and then having that rubber tube inside the lay shaft made it quite easy for um, lining up the lay shaft because I could just get a screwdriver into the center of the the rubber tube from uh, one end and then eyeball it and line it up from the other end and then once it's lined up and just push the spindle through and that ejects the rubber hose out the other end and then that just taps into place and then once that's in you can rotate the tail housing back around and then it just slots in place and I'll stick the bolts in this is the selector forks going in Uh, this is quite a fiddle to get all this together one of those jobs where you could do with an extra set of fingers and then just tap the roll pin in with the trusty claw hammer shifter goes in and, and it's time to check that we got gears, which we do. Everything's so selecting as it should, very smoothly. All feels good. So now we just need to put the little um, detent plunger 
in the side which is uh, spring loaded and just gives it's what gives you the, the positive engagement um, into each gear. This is a nose cone for a hydraulic, like a center mounted hydraulic um, slave cylinder, which I'm gonna be using. I've got hydraulic clutch on the car, so this should work well. I'm not sure exactly what type of slave fits on that, but I'm sure I can make some sort of adapter to use something. So that's got a new seal in it. And then all those bolts were through bolts, so they um, put a bit of sealer on those. And then this is the end cap, the uh, shift rod obviously comes out through the back through there, so this is what seals it. And then finish it off with a nice drizzle of olive oil. There's a little breather that, that you can fit to that hole. Um, I was advised by Dave just to use a hose tail and actually take it to a, take that up to the catch can. So that's what I'll do with this. And that's it. Rebuilt. Ready to go. I'm looking forward to getting this uh, bolted to the back of the Evans Power Burton Pinto that's being built. And I'll have some updates on the engine coming shortly. but. That's going to be it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.